All right, hey, it is Sleepy Kaiju here. I am back with my first tutorial in quite some time. Anyway, so today I'm going to go over how I blend with markers, uh, alcohol-based markers. I generally use Copics, but I do have a few Prismas. And then my roommate actually picked up this like value brand from Walmart a while back, and I was surprised at how decent the quality was. So I am going to just give you guys a little demo slash tutorial, I guess, and uh, go over um, just my opinions and techniques and everything and how these work out for me. And hopefully you'll learn something and might help you decide on what markers to invest in, because they can be very expensive. All right, so first up, we have the Azure markers over there on the far left. They are, uh, the box that she got was a 13 pack. One of them is a colorless blender. One of them is a brownish color and it came in like exploded uh, and only one of the tips works. Uh, they're double-ended. One of them is like a chisel and then one of them is just a normal marker nib. I uh, did the math and they were about $1.30 a marker. They do come in bigger packs. I'm not sure what the price point for those would be. Probably similar, but uh, anyway, something to watch out for with cheaper markers is even if the color laydown and everything looks good, if it is archival or light fast or whatever, uh, which pretty much just means is it gonna like fade. Uh, so that's not something that I trust these with, but uh, they are definitely a decent beginner marker or something to just doodle out concepts with, you know? And then in the center, I have Prismacolor markers, and I didn't have two of those in blue, or any of them in blue, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Didn't have any of those in blue, but I did have two different shades of gray, so I went to use that. Uh, the gray that I'm using is a little bit dark, darker than I would like, ideally, but, you know, it's, it's all right. It worked out okay. And then on the far left, I have Copics, which is like the... I want to say industry standard, I guess they're everybody's favorite, uh, and that's for good reason. They are refillable, they are very high quality, um, you can you can do a whole lot of different effects and uh, coloring styles and things with those. Um, there are definitely some really good videos and tutorials and stuff out there on different coloring styles, but this is supposed to be just kind of short and sweet, so I'm just going to go over mine. Um, now, generally what I'll do Oh, the Prismacolors are like five to nine dollars generally a piece in uh, USD and the professional Copic markers, depending on if you get uh, Chow or Sketch or Original or whatever, they're generally between like five and ten. These are Sketch, which are normally between like seven and ten, seven and twelve. Uh, depends on where you buy them at. I usually go to Jerry's Artorama, uh, but they are definitely more expensive if you don't have a coupon at Michael's and they are, I won't even shop there expensive at Hobby Lobby. I don't shop there for other reasons too, but that's definitely a good one. Anyway, uh, so this is all done on Bristol, nothing fancy, just a pad of Bristol paper, or um, oh I lied, this is marker paper, interesting. I've been using um, Kansa marker paper, and I grabbed the wrong one. This is Beak Paper Company marker paper, which is definitely very nice, but it is in the... I must have put that in the wrong drawer. Anyway, that's on me. I know what I'm doing, I promise. <laughs> Anyway, so generally what I do when I color after I do my line work is I will erase all the pencil and then I will lay down in like block colors or whatever the lightest color that I'm using. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the lightest possible color. If you find you need to add highlights later, there are actually ways to get around doing that, um, which we will go over in just a minute. So what I'll do is I'll lay down the block of the light color and then I'll let that dry for a minute or two and then I'll go back over it with uh, just this exact same color, just a second layer, and I generally try to work in little tight circles to keep the streaks down. Uh, I have noticed, which you'll see a little little bit of at the very end of this, I have noticed that the Prismacolor chisel tips tend to have a much, much better, cleaner, smoother color laydown than the- oh, my bird's here, hello. Uh, they tend to have a much smoother color laydown than the Copic marker chisel tip, uh, which is good to know because they are generally a bit cheaper. So if you have a lot of paper to cover, that's definitely worth looking into. Um, chisel tip on the Prisma isn't, or the um, Copic isn't bad, but it's not ideal, I wouldn't say. I don't usually use it. I just find that they dry out a little bit fast, but maybe that's just me, who knows? Anyway, so after I lay down a couple layers of the lightest color, uh, I have noticed that I can generally get more coloring layers out of the Copics than I can the other other brands that I've played with. Um, I think you can generally get like between three and four layers of that color on there, that same color, and it'll look a little bit darker or more vibrant and uh, less streaky, I suppose, uh, the more layers that you put down. So I'll do that third layer and I'll kind of block in where I want the shadows to be, and then I will 
go over the darkest parts of that with a dark marker, and then I will actually touch the tips of the markers together, mostly just the light one into the dark one, and then that'll pick up that color for just a little bit, and I will blend that in, and, and just kind of keep working in those tight little circles right up against the edge between the dark and the, the light, and I'll just, it makes like a really nice blending effect, and you can just keep on layering. Very nice. And you can also add darker, darker tones with either, you know, of course, a darker marker, or you can just be cost effective and keep the uh, the dark marker that you've already been using and add in more layers of that to get like deeper, darker shadows. And so this other thing that I do sometimes is I will actually use the a lighter color to fade out a darker or more vibrant color. You can do this with a colorless blender. You can do this with, uh, if you're using orange, you could use it with like a light yellow marker and it will actually just make like a, it'll kind of pull up or fade out rather some of that other color and you'll kind of have to work on making sure that your edges don't look uh super dark like how sometimes the only other thing i can think of is um watercolor maybe how sometimes the edges of it will look darker than the color like as you get towards the center uh and i have found that the touching the marker tips doesn't actually work with these as their markers it doesn't pick it up almost at all and what little it does is gone immediately so what i have to do with those is lay down the uh, darker color or just one layer of the lighter color, lay down the darker color, and then just keep using that light one to aggressively try and layer on itself, which doesn't work as well as Prisma or Copic, and try and fade out the edges of that darker color. And it's not impossible, but it does bleed through the paper quite a bit. And the downside to doing that is that if you are too close to the line work or too close to another section of color, it will kind of saturate the paper around where you're at with that with that ink with that alcohol and kind of push it into the next color or push it outside of your line art and you could in theory use a colorless blender to try and pick some of that up uh you can pick up your whatever it is you use to line and kind of go over that a bit or if you're doing a background just ignore it but uh it's kind of annoying so i don't do that very often and it's especially not ideal for like little details but anyway, I would say that these are definitely a decent cost-effective option, these are markers, and you can also mix the Prisma and Copic brands together, like the individual markers, you can use them in the same piece, uh, which is good because sometimes you can only find certain colors in one or the other at your local store, or, you know, if one's more cost-effective than the other for you, good option. So the Prismas are not bad, they are definitely good. Uh, I think they both have their strengths and weaknesses. The Azure markers are probably just good if you're just starting out or just want something to practice with or aren't doing anything too serious. But anyway, I hope this was helpful for you and let me know if you guys want to see any other tutorials from me or if you have any questions or anything. If you're struggling with your markers, let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video. Thank you.